forgot my name, Mike, today, and so I'll try and talk loud so you can hear me over the wind noise, but we've got some significant amount of driving to do today, so uh, I figured I would get ah, and, and, uh, getting some more uh, questions about trucks and price ranges and what I would do and things like that. And so I guess when we get into price ranges, that kind of changes things, right, because we're going to talk about... Uh, well, today, so this video I'm making at the end of December of 2022, so keep that in mind for future reference if you're going to um, be buying a truck, you know, the market's going to change, money's going to change, inflation's going to change, all that later down the road, so, um, but as of today, I had a guy ask me, he said he wants to spend um, 30, he wants to say around 30 grand, probably less than 30 grand, and, um, and, um, asking about a 6.7 or a 6.0 power stroke. And, uh, yeah, let me get a drink of water here real quick. That 30 grand is a kind of an odd, odd, um, price range, in my opinion, especially for the diesel market, because you're, you're, um, in my opinion, you're kind of in that spot where you're going to spend a, a fair amount of money, of thirty grand, and you're still going to have to, um, and you're still going to be in, a, in kind of a half wore out truck. Um, so you can get an okay deal, but that's that's the price range where you really need to do your homework on who had the truck and what their maintenance was like, and um, all that other stuff because. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're in that you're in that amount of money where you're spending a, a good penny on a truck, and you have, to have the potential for big repairs to come. So, if I was to speak to this guy specifically about the 6.0 or the 6.7, in my case, I would probably go 6.0s just because I like them. I've, I've had good luck with them. I understand them. Um, but in, like I've said in other videos. Only buy a 6.0 if you yourself is going to work on it and you're capable, or you have a shop that has a, a good reputation of, of six liters. A bad mechanic will ruin a six liter for you. They're a sem semi complicated engine, and they're not really for dummies, and so you get a bad mechanic, you'll have a nightmare. If you're going to buy a 6.0, I either like to buy them um, fully, I prefer to buy everything just completely stock, because then you're not going to have. You're not going to run into anything crazy, um, either that or, and if, if the bulletproofing has been done, you want a receipt on it, you want to make sure it was done by a shop that was capable and understood what they were doing while they were there, because if they put uh, cheap O-rings in your oil system, or cheap injectors in it, or a cheap EGR, you know, or, or, or didn't, but if they had the heads off to put studs on, and they didn't take the time to look through the heads to look for cracks and stuff, it's not worth it. You're, you might as well just have a stock truck and, and do it all right the first time. So, um, but back to that thirty thousand dollar range, I go six zero because uh, you could buy a really nice six liter for fifteen to twenty thousand bucks. And uh, worst case scenario, absolute worst case scenario, you put six or seven thousand dollars into a six zero. Um, you know, to get it going again, you almost never mess with the five R one ten. Um, injectors are cheap, parts are cheap, there's lots of support out there for them, and they're a cheap buy. The 6.7, in my opinion, to find a half decent 6.7, you're going to be in that, you know, you're going to be in that $40,000 or better range. Find a low mileage one um, where you can kind of control maintenance for the, the rest of the life of that truck and kind of be able to buy it. And if you're getting payments, you're going to have those higher payments and not be, and not just be fronted with this you know, either a CP4 failure or a turbo failure or something like that, or a DPF system, emissions related stuff, because they're gonna come flying out of the left field and get you. So that's another uh, another thing to kind of think of. That ah, I really wrestle with that because, in my opinion, if you were to buy a 6.0 or not a 6.0, a 6.7, I'd spend the I'd spend I'd spend the, I'd spend the you know, you can get a base model 6.7 for a pretty dang new one for 45, 50,000 bucks and, um, and and really take care of that truck and, and have a good good long run with it uh, because, you know, all the 6.7 power strokes are going to have the CP4. They didn't have near as many problems 
as GM and Dodge, or well, GM mostly, Dodge really didn't run them long enough to see too many issues. Um, but because Ford has a nice supporting fuel system where GM doesn't, it really was hard on hunting um, CP4. So that's kind of a uh, $30,000 is a hard market for the diesels. I'd rather just spend less, plan on a worst case scenario, uh, buy the 6.0 and, and get along fine. Um, another thing though to think about is I think we're um, I, watching the truck markets and the auctions and things. Um, I think this is the last, the only reason that I think trucks are still bringing okay money here in December of 2022 uh, is because this is the last year where of the, uh, the, the Trump had put into place where you could anything, any equipment you bought uh, until 2022 was 100%. You depreciate out 100% of it. So uh, after the, you know there were a lot of guys buying equipment this year to, to get that benefit and things like that. And but nonetheless, we're headed for a slowing economy and, and uh, just marketplace and things like that. Uh, the, the deals are way better than they were a year or two years ago. So and I think if you can hang on for another six months. I think we'll really be in the front of this recession that we're headed for. You'll be able to get a smoking deal if you're, if you're just looking for a bargain. So if you hang tight, you can probably get a better deal. But yeah, if for thirty thousand bucks, I would rather go the six zero and um, and just have a little money around to fix it in case things go south. Um, you know, but if I was to go six seven, I'd rather buy a really new one and um, have control of the fuel that goes through it, run additives, you know, keep that CP four alive. Because an abused one will get expensive. So, because that's the problem, you buy a $30,000 truck, you pay $30,000 for a 6.7, you're still going to have, you're probably going to buy a 100000 150000 mile truck, and then you're, you're going to be potentially headed for ten, fifteen, forty, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 for the repairs if that CP4 gets you, or the emission system, if you're an emissions company, if you're an emissions, uh, con, uh, emissions required place, you know, that, that they'll get you there. So, You'll have to keep up on that, and that can get off the pricey off the quick. Still, um, yeah, that's kind of what I would do. You know, thirty thousand dollars to buy a really nice new gas pickup. And I don't know what you're pulling, um, but you know, if it's anything under. And the really nice thing about the six liters is they're just they're really a fuel efficient engine. You know it. Um, they just all the ones I've had. Have, you didn't have to try to get 16, 17 miles to the gallon, and I've had a few that did 20. Um, so, yeah, that, that's where they really shine. Where the 6.7 is a fuel drinker. Well, all the new trucks are. I mean, that's what you get with horsepower. You got to you're using that horsepower. You're only using the fuel. So um, keep that in mind. But yeah, you know, and I know you said that the, the guy said that the 7.3, he couldn't find any 7.3s in that price range, and that's that's true. I mean, there just is no used ones around. Um, I'm kind of keeping an eye out because I don't have one right now. I sold my last one. Um, so, but kind of, I sold it because I'm anticipating a, a recession. Um, I think it's, I can spend a lot of time on that, but I think we're inevitably headed for a recession and a pretty darn good one. I don't know, I kind of want to play it a little safe. I can still have my Ranger. I don't plan on selling it, but if the deal came along, I'd get rid of it too and, and just go back to trucks that I own outright. So, um, yeah, that's $30,000 is a weird price range. I'd rather just spend 50 or spend 20. Um, so, kind of keep that in mind. I hope that helps you out a little bit. Um, but if we were to go we'll try and broaden this a little bit for people that uh, aren't as Ford specific, you can find eh, kind of the same deal, I guess, applies to all of them. That $30,000 that you're going to buy a diesel, you're going to have, um, we're going to get around this guy's sneak around. Truck that can really roll you over with repairs. 
So um, definitely something to think about there. Yeah, I'd probably go. Yeah, I don't know what I'd buy for 30 grand. Oh uh, man, yeah, it just depends. You know, and if you're to tow heavy, if you're gonna be pulling heavy and you wanna spend that 30 grand, I would no doubt go out of uh, early 2000s, single axles, truck of some sort, of Freightliner or Peterbilt or Kenworth or something with uh, either an M11 or an 83 Cummins or even a little cab. C12s are all right. C10s are okay. Uh, the C7s are, they make, I've got a 3126, which is just like a C7, which isn't a bad motor, but uh, um, just not big power, you know, and I'd rather just there in that kind of pickup truck range, like I'd rather just have the big rotating assembly of like my favorite favorite truck for fuel mileage and diesel power is an M11 if you build on a single axle. They make good power, they get good fuel mileage, they're reliable, you can have actual jakes, which you can't have with an 83 or um, or a, you know a C7 or anything like that. You get a true jake brake on an M11, they're they're just strong. So I sure I've had one. I should have never sold that truck. It was a good little truck, but anyways. Definitely. I can't really pinpoint a pickup that I would spend that money on, really, for 30 grand. It just would be real tough. Uh, you know, if you're going to buy a 6.2 Ford, you can usually find them for a lot less than that, so why not buy a 6.2 Ford? You, know, you can find them under 200,000 miles for 15, 16, 17 thousand dollars. They're not bad pullers at all, especially if you're just pulling an RV and you know you're just it's a, just a fun truck. If you're not out to make money with it, that's a good truck that you can buy it once and usually not do anything to it. Um, so, but yeah, I'll show you guys this. The only reason I decided to make a video today, I mean, there is night. This is a 90 mile stretch before the next town. There's nothing, nothing out here. Ugh. But anyways, gosh, you it. Rotten thing. So yeah, that's, I hope that helps you a little. You know, a cheap, cheap pullers, it's hard to, in my opinion, the 6.0 is the go-to for your cheap pulling truck. Uh, unless you found an okay deal on a Dodge. You know, or even, I've said this, I'm trying to not be repetitive with my other videos, but you know, those mid, early 2000s, Duramaxes were really reliable trucks. Um, but yeah, same deal get into the emissions equipment if you have to stay emissions intact. Um, you want to go an earlier truck that doesn't have that. It's just expensive to keep an emissions intact truck in that high mileage life for a long time. So, you know, if you can hold tight for a little bit, I think the market will drop and you might be able to find a 7.3 out there. But I think that I kind of think a lot of people are catching on to just how expensive it is to own and run these dang diesels.
yeah, that M11 was awesome. And you put jakes on it so you could run the mountains. And I mean, those jakes hit like a real set of jakes. They're not an exhaust brake. So that's a, definitely a route to go there. And the M11 had a few different versions. There was the L10, which was the early version, which was mechanical. The M11 was through the 90s into the early 2000s. And it was electronic, but mostly mechanical engines. Really reliable, but still had cruise control and things like that. And then you would go to the ISM, which is still made today, which is the version of the M11. And in that medium duty 10 liter category, you cannot, that's my favorite engine. There's not an engine that Cap makes, that Detroit makes, that anybody makes. I'd rather have than that. Um, so I'd go that route for sure. And then, unless you found something like a 127 Detroit or something like that, you know, it just, if you're pulling, yeah, now I'm kind of grabbing trail in there. But, Anyways, yeah, kind of briefly recap, um, 30000 probably spend twenty on a, on a 6.0 and, and have some money later on to clean it up, um, you know, or if you just wanted to, you could dig it to the best shop in town, have them bulletproof it completely, do everything you'd ever want, bump the pit stud it, turn the horsepower up on it. Uh, and be in that new 6.7 horsepower range. It's not that hard to get that 400, 425 out of the 6.0 uh, as long as you've got studs. Um, and and uh, get along with it just fine like that. It's probably the route I would go. Um, but yeah, as far as gas trucks go, tons of gas trucks, tons of reliable ones. The Chevy 6 liter, the 624 all fall into that category. Um, like my other videos I talked about, it's not a big Dodge fan at all. The reason I don't Dodge is for Cummins. Yeah, there's a, a quick little kind of quick video while I'm driving here today. Let me see if we roll over this hill. Listen, wow, I'll show you this. It's kind of neat. One of the straightest stretches of road <laughs> I think that I know of. It cracks me up. But uh, yeah, it's all sprawled out. So yeah, I hope that helps there. I, I, I got another, I might make another video. Uh, today while I'm just driving about uh, Somebody else asked about kind of a newer newer pickups which way I'd go uh, The gas stuff so maybe I'll do that. I hope this helps. So uh, Yeah, thanks for watching